Steven Universe and all associated images are property of Cartoon Network, Rebecca Sugar, and any and all other respective owners. I don't know them all. All footage in this video has been used for the purpose of critique parody under fair use. Please support the official release. This theory, more so than a lot of my past theories, is going to seem like I'm speculating more than I am gathering evidence to back up my claims, but the evidence is still there. There just isn't as much of it per point that I intend to make. That's why I've decided to put these four points together into one video rather than make one video for each. There just isn't enough here to do four distinct videos on the topic. And yeah, I know the thumbnail only shows three of the four diamonds, but this video will be discussing all four. There just doesn't happen to be an image of pink diamond yet for me to use. To sum up exactly what this video is about, in this video I will be attempting to break down and work out the roles of each diamond. After all, in a society as strict and structured as Homeworld, the only reason that you would have four leaders is if their roles are so well defined that there would never be any need or reason for them to compete. Since I have already mentioned Pink Diamond by name, let's start with her. She seems like the diamond who we would know the least about. We've seen Yellow Diamond and we've heard her talk, we've met some of her followers. We've seen Blue Diamond and we've heard her talk and we've met some of her followers. We've even seen what White Diamond looks like, but all we've ever seen of Pink Diamond is her ankles and a little bit of what looks like crystal growing up from the ground around her feet. Still, I think we know more about her than you might think, enough to surmise the bare bones of the role that her and her followers played. Keep in mind as we continue that this video isn't about determining where the diamonds are now or what happened to them during the war. It's about their roles in homeworld society, nothing more and nothing less. That said, let's take a look at the only gem that I think everyone can agree had something to do with Pink Diamond, the mysterious Rose Quartz. As a gem associated with Pink Diamond, Rose's motivations, before the rebellion at least, would have been in line with Pink Diamond's motivations. So what do we know about Rose's motivations that could tell us something about Pink Diamond? Well, we know that Rose was with the gems who first arrived on Earth, or at the very least that she came to Earth very soon after and that she was still on Homeworld's side at the time. We know that at some point very early in the colonization effort, she came to love the Earth, and that she rebelled, opposing Homeworld, and intending to drive them off planet. We know that sometime around the time that Rose rebelled, Pink Diamond seemingly disappeared. Whether Rose is somehow Pink Diamond herself, or just a trusted quartz in Pink Diamond's ranks, none of that really matters, because it doesn't really change anything that we can deduce about Pink Diamond thanks to Rose including my next point, which is really the only one of these points so far that is relevant to the video. Rose, when talking to young rocker Greg and We Need to Talk, seems to feel personally responsible for the damage that Homeworld was able to do to Earth before its retreat. While there are many gem ruins all across the world, the only site that we've seen which has actually damaged the planet is the Kindergarten. If Rose feels personally responsible for the damage to Earth, and it is the Kindergartens which have damaged the Earth and not much else, this tells us that Rose had something to do with the establishment of kindergartens on Earth. And this is what I was talking about before. Whether she is somehow Pink Diamond, or she was just assigned by Pink Diamond to oversee the Earth kindergartens, it doesn't really matter. If Rose did have something to do with the kindergartens, and I'm more than 90% sure that she did, that tells us something. And there is real evidence for this as well. The crystals in the injectors are pink, and Peridot has, through dialogue in When It Rains, established that the Earth Kindergartens were used to make quartz gems. Who better to establish these kindergartens than a pink quartz with life-giving powers? So it makes sense that if her follower is in charge of the kindergartens being established on a new world, that Pink Diamond is in charge of the kindergartens overall. Kindergartens are how the gems reproduce. The propagation of your species is definitely important enough that, in a society like Homeworld, it is conceivable that an entire quarter of the society would be dedicated to overseeing it, especially when the process is as industrialized as kindergartening. But AJ, you ask, couldn't it be that kindergartening was just Rose's job and that Pink Diamond didn't have anything to do with it at all? Well, hypothetical viewer, I draw your attention back to what little we have seen of Pink Diamond. In her moon base mural, remember those crystals growing up from the ground at her feet? Well, where do new gems come from when they emerge from the kindergarten? Is it perhaps from the ground? In other words, I think that the crystals growing around Pink Diamond are symbolic of new gems being born from her kindergartens. So now that we've established what Pink Diamond was in charge of before whatever happened to her happened through Rose, let's discuss the only diamond that we've seen Rose have any kind of interaction with. Not my best segue, but hey, what are you going to do? This one actually is pretty simple. We've seen one of the earliest battles for Earth, when the rebellion was small and insignificant before the situation blossomed into all-out war. And that battle took place specifically in Blue Diamond's court. And Rose calls out Blue Diamond by name, insisting that this colony, that meaning the gem colony on Earth, will not be completed. 
Why target Blue Diamond and then exclaim that specifically? Well, I think it's because Blue Diamond, at this point, is the only diamond on Earth. Because Blue Diamond is in charge of culture and colonization. While a new planet's kindergartens are being established, I think Blue Diamond and her followers are in charge of ensuring that the rest of the colonization process goes off without a hitch. I think they're in charge of finding sites for and constructing all of those neat buildings that we see in the moon base computer, and setting up communication centers and warps. It explains why the warp pads and the warp streams are blue, why the crystals that make up the communication hub are a kind of blue-purple, and why other structures we've seen either resemble Blue Diamond's Cloud Arena, like the structure in Giant Woman, or are either shades of blue like the ruins on the island in Island Adventure, or are surrounded and overcast by shades of blue like the Lunar Sea Spire. One of the things that I don't often talk about in these theory videos is the crew and the way that they've designed this world to look. The influence of the crew cannot be overlooked here, as it seems pretty obvious to me that the crew wants us to associate gem buildings with the color blue. Blue for Blue Diamond. But I said colonization and culture, so where does culture come into this? Well, how many of these structures actually seem to be designed for function more than they are form? It seems pretty obvious that at least some of these structural designs are more traditional than they are practical. There's also the fact that Blue Diamond's court is depicted as a group of high-class, high-culture socialites. The way that they are standing around in their big, elaborate hair and dresses, I almost expect them to be carrying around glasses of expensive wine and discussing high fashion. Again, the theming here is important. It's meant to tell us something. So that's two down and two to go. Let's handle Yellow Diamond next. We do know the most about her, after all. We've seen two of her followers, Jasper and Peridot, and while they seem to be pretty different, there is overlap between them. Jasper is a powerful and experienced warrior, but she wields a piece of advanced technology, the Gem Destabilizer. The Gem Destabilizer isn't only an advanced piece of tech, it is also a very potent weapon capable of instantly poofing any gem, even a fusion. Peridot seems to be a type of gem who develops new technologies, but the technology that we've seen associated with her, her limb enhancers, her robinoids, her EMP bombs, and the cluster experiments are tech with very obvious military applications. It's for these reasons that I think that Yellow Diamond is the gem over military. She is over the best soldiers as well as developing new technologies which would make those soldiers more effective. And I think that this is supported by the rapid leap forward in technological development after the war. Assuming that there had never been a war before the Gem Civil War, and that all of the Gem's military buildup up to that point was precautionary, it's unlikely that even Yellow Diamond, let alone her fellow Diamonds, would have believed it necessary to push the development of defense technology. But now, after the war, now that Homeworld has experienced war and knows firsthand what it can do, Yellow Diamond has reason to push for the development of military technology, and her fellow Diamonds have no reason to oppose her. She is free to develop new weapons, both weapons which we have seen in action and weapons with huge, disastrous capabilities that we hope to never see. Weapons which do seem to be Yellow Diamond's domain, since they seem to be directly under the control of Yellow Diamond and her followers. Which only leaves us with one diamond remaining, White Diamond. Despite White Diamond being one of the three diamonds that we've seen, at least in a confirmed image, she is the diamond that we actually know the least about. We haven't met any of her followers, that we know of for sure anyway, and so we haven't met anyone who might have priorities in line with hers. But we have seen some indications that White Diamond was a big deal, even among the diamonds. Let's look at the depiction of White Diamond in the Pyramid Temple first. No, not that. That is not White Diamond. The size and the hair are all completely wrong. No, this is White Diamond. While she has clearly been redesigned a bit since her appearance here, her hair and eye shape are pretty well in line with the moon base image, and the pose of the two figures is almost identical. That said, let's look at the panel of the mural which contains the image of White Diamond in the Pyramid Temple. We see her descending. To Earth? To somewhere else? It doesn't really matter. She is descending from the sky, with hands reaching up towards her in reverence. She is depicted almost like a god, above and out of reach of the beings depicted below her. The moon base, which sits overlooking all of Earth and seems to be the site from which the gem operations on the planet were overseen, is entirely made of white material, implying that it has some tie to white diamond. Which, in turn, implies that gems associated with white diamond were above the gems on the planet below, overseeing their actions. And this isn't the only time that we see something associated with white diamond placed above something associated with the others. In both versions of the homeworld insignia, white diamond's symbol is at the top. On the moon base, in all of the images of the diamonds, we see them surrounded by floating orbs. 
White Diamond is the only one possessing of an orb which is noticeably larger than the others, and she holds it in her hands, as if it belongs specifically to her, as if she is in complete control of everything about it. What if these orbs are the worlds within the Gempire that each diamond has primary control over? Their territory, for lack of a better term, where they can pursue their responsibilities and interests. If that is the case, then what is the larger orb? Well, I think it's Homeworld itself, the specific planet, the original home of the gems. I think it's the largest because it's the most important, and that White Diamond possesses it to show that she controls Homeworld itself, and, by extension, the entire Gempire. Combined with the imagery which consistently places White Diamond, or places things associated with White Diamond, above the other diamonds, or above the domains of the other diamonds, that seems to suggest that White Diamond is the leader of all of Homeworld. If you've been wondering how a totalitarian society can have three to four leaders, then wonder no more, because they don't. While I think that each diamond is important, that they, for the most part, each have their own autonomy, and that the opinions of each diamond are weighed in big decisions, I also think that it is White Diamond who makes the decisions which will affect all gems everywhere. That it is White Diamond who has the final say. So, to reiterate, based on what evidence we have, I think that Blue Diamond was, or is, in charge of colonization and spreading and maintaining homeworld culture, that Pink Diamond oversaw the proliferation of gem kind, that Yellow Diamond was, and still is, in charge of the defense of the Gempire, and that White Diamond was, and assuming that she isn't the gem that they found in the Pyramid Temple, still is, the leader of all of homeworld. That's everything, overall, and that she is above even her fellow diamonds. The justifications may be a little flimsy, but I think it all makes enough sense that it just might be true. But what do you think? Does this make sense to you, or insert meaningful pun here? Let's get a discussion going in the comment section down below. Either way, this has been AJ22, and I will talk to you guys later. Do you have a theory idea or merely a musing about the show that you'd like me to discuss? You can head on over to my Facebook page and send me a message detailing your ideas, and if I find them interesting enough, I'll be sure to respond. Or you can head on over to my Tumblr page and send me an ask. If it's not something that I've covered before, I'll be sure to answer. If you are on Facebook or Tumblr, I also recommend that you like and or follow me there as well to keep up to date on all of my content as well as any supplementary content that I might post on either of those sites. And if you know anyone on Facebook or Tumblr who might find my content interesting, please share it with them. I'd really appreciate it.